okay and the next step uh, in our journey toward the server side is uh, uh, understanding how to provide services uh, from the server uh, to the clients and uh, basically the server provides services uh, using http uh, calls uh, that respond on specific uh, url or specific paths and on specific uh, methods um, uh, along the years uh, this uh, technique of offering services using basically http as a transport mechanism uh, has evolved significantly and a lot of uh, providers service providers are now using a more or less uniform way uh, of doing that of offering these services using the um, http and uh, that's uh, actually generated a sort of a, a, a standard way uh, of offering APIs uh, over the internet uh, called uh, REST. Mm -hmm. So, uh, apart from the dog having some REST uh, in this picture, um, uh, we are trying today to, to learn the basics about uh, uh, what is a REST API, how to create our uh, APIs, uh, APIs stand for Application Programming Interface, of course, where uh, are calls uh, that our uh, client side can do towards a server side. So whenever the client needs to have some information to store some data just imagine for example the work you're doing in the labs uh, uh, sooner or later you want to store the list of the stars somewhere and this should be stored in a, to a centralized place into a database into some server and so the browser needs to communicate to the server say okay store this new task or retrieve the list of tasks from la uh, last time last week or the last time i connected to to the application and so the client and server needs to talk and the rest, rest is just a style, programming style um, that uh, will help us in defining how an application uh, in, in general, but in our case, it will be the web front end application uh, can access some services or some data that is stored somewhere else uh, on a server. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of uh, the problem that, that we're trying to face. What is the best way of doing that? An easy way, uh, some guidelines, uh, for uh, choosing uh, the protocol, the methods, uh, and, uh, and um, the style of programming for doing that. And uh, uh, we are trying to follow uh, the, the suggestions that uh, of this REST um, uh, style, programming style. Uh, REST stands for Representational State Transfer, which is a big sound, sounding name, um, but it's basically um, you know, co uh, summarizes everything we need to know. We need to transfer some information basically about the state of a system by exchanging representations uh, of the state itself. Um, this was the work of the PhD thesis uh, of uh, Roy Fielding, uh, which is uh, one of the pioneers, one of the leaders uh, um, that worked uh, on the Apache project and uh, was one of the co founders and director of the Apache Software Foundation. So he's a real big name in this. Uh, um, scenario of, um, of of the web applications and web frameworks, and uh, in from the theoretical point of view, what his contribution was just in his PhD thesis, uh, in his PhD work, uh, to to study the, the style of software architecture. So REST is not a library, REST is not a framework, REST is not a programming language. Uh, REST is just a way of thinking, a way of, of approaching the design of. Um, client server applications in some way and uh, the style is independent from the platform from the language so it can be applied uh, to any kind of combinations of platforms and languages and, and uh, of course uh, it, it's mainly uh, deployed on top of http uh, so it can be you know, it can interpret quite standardly uh, all the rest uh, philosophy um, uh, works around the concept uh, of a resource. Mm -hmm. A resource is something that the server has uh, and the clients need to access in some way, or vice versa, or the other way around. Uh, it's a piece of information that has a me uh, that processes some meaning, uh, and this information can be on the server side and the clients need it, or, or it should be on the client side and needs to be stored on the server or maybe this, the clients need to update the information that is on the server, whatever you want. Uh, everything should be described in terms of resources. Resources can be documents, can be images, can be data, can be uh, objects. Uh, um, 
Uh, we can also uh, think about resources that are not really um, computer uh, objects, so maybe a people, no? Uh, a real person can be a, a resource because the, the system will represent the metadata about these people. Hmm? Um, so we should abstract from the data that we have to a more general concept of a resource. So how we can, like, you know, when you are trying to design some uh, entity relationship models, uh, we are trying to think in terms of abstract entities. And this is more or less uh, this kind of, uh, of uh, abstraction that we are trying to do. So we are trying to identify which are the main resources that our client and server applications need to share, need to, uh, co uh, to, to exchange in some way. So we are not uh, uh, exposing directly the database, of course, it would be a very unwise thing to do, uh, and we are not exposing directly the services that can be implemented in many different technologies, okay? Uh, so we, we are abstracting them and saying, okay, let's describe the domain of our application in terms of a set of resources, hmm? abstract resources, entities. And what do we do with these resources? Uh, well, first of all, we, we name them. So every resource uh, will have an identifier, will have uh, um, one specific name, one specific mapping, <coughs> And we will map them to URIs. So first of all, we need to have a way of mapping resources, which are abstract entities, into URIs, which are strings, a kind of text in, in practice. And then we need a, a method for, for describing the resource itself. So first we give a name to throw URLs, and then we give the internal representation. An implementation of the resource <coughs> may it's a it's um, a file, actually, or a file fragment uh, that contains the, informations, the information to describe uh, the content of that resource. Uh, you can choose uh, many different formats, of course, for uh, representing the, uh, a resource. It can be a table, can be a CSV, can be an XML file, and so on. Uh, in general, when we are designing REST APIs, the, the format of representation of the resources that we choose is the JSON format. Mm -hmm. So just to summarize, every resource has a specific address, a name, and we see the, the rules for naming, and a specific representation. For the representation, we use the, <coughs> the JSON format. JSON, uh, that is, is written like J-S-O-N, but is read like JSON, the name, actually the name of the person, and uh, it's a very, very simple data format uh, which is inspired by the object notation in JavaScript. So when uh, we are, since the first lecture, we know how to create objects in JavaScript with braces and uh, att attributes and values uh, uh, inside the, the braces. A JSON draws from that information, <coughs> and so it uh, adapts and simplifies the JavaScript syntax uh, that uh, is used for describing objects, uh, and it defines a very um, simple text format by which uh, it's po also possible to generate complex objects. By the way, since we are talking about web servers, the MIME type, uh, the content type of JSON file is application slash JSON. So that should be the type of file that we exchange between the client and the server. Uh, I say that JSON is, uh, is uh, simple because uh, actually it only has uh, uh, three primitive types uh, and two composition mechanisms uh, for creating composite types. The primitive types are just string, number, and boolean. A string, uh, so see a value, is com maybe a string or a number or a true or false. Hmm? So it's another uh, boolean value. The, bo the boolean type only has two possibilities. And strings uh, must be quoted using double quotes, always, not single quotes. So that's why the syntax is simpler. It, it has many, op uh, many less options compared to the syntax in, in JavaScript. And uh, so a single string is a JSON document uh, containing just one, the string, a single number also. But we can put together strings and numbers, and of course booleans, but they're very rare, into objects or arrays. Arrays uh, are very similar to JavaScript arrays. Uh, we are at the open um, square bracket, uh, closing square brackets, and a set of values uh, separated by comma. And these values may be any of these. So other, they may be strings, maybe numbers, maybe other arrays. So we can have nested arrays. It may be objects, so we may have objects inside the arrays, 
uh, whatever nesting we want and uh, uh, the other type of combination of uh, values are uh, objects objects are of course uh, a series of mappings between key and value uh, key value comma another key another value comma and key and value are separated with a column exactly like in javascript the, the difference is that the key in javascript is an identifier and uh, in json the key is a string so it must be quoted basically so the, the basic difference is that all the strings should have double quotes uh, and all the object keys are not identifiers but are strings so they must be always quoted always there are no shortcuts for that so this is all the syntax and so uh, if we are defining uh, for example in json a resource that describes uh, a person we may have this person described as an object so braces means object this object has some four properties first name last name address and four numbers uh, first name and last name are properties of type uh, uh, string and these are the values john and smith uh, the, the the comma separate the different properties the address is an object so we are we have nesting an object inside another object so the first object is uh, the person uh, address is the sub property uh, that itself as a value of type object and here are the values or the, the properties of this nested object and phone numbers on the other hand is a is an array so hence the square brackets uh, uh, of strings of two values uh, that in this case they are both strings hmm? so it's a syntax that we are quite familiar if you read it in javascript it is valid javascript so it, you could also write that in javascript in javascript but probably we would drop these quotes uh, and maybe we can we would add another comma here and a comma there that are optionals at the end at the element and that are easier for cut and paste and but they are forbidden here in json hmm? um, there are no variables here there are no string interpolation nothing just uh, a plain text uh, containing objects uh, arrays and the values contains uh, in these objects and arrays and uh, there's not much more in uh, in json to, than this uh, so the full syntax if you go to the specification that uh, we linked uh, a couple of slides ago uh, the, the full document only has uh, uh, these three syntax uh, diagrams that describe how to construct a valid json document plus some details about how to write numbers and how to write strings but these are really no level uh, stuff lexical stuff there's nothing more so it's very simple format uh, but it's, at the same time it's quite powerful because you can create a nested description of objects and arrays uh, with, the, with an arbitrary structure and also of course uh, uh, using json in uh, every programming language is very easy because of the simplicity of the of the format uh, um, so we have uh, uh, see a lot of libraries that we help us to to deal with this uh, uh, format and in particular in javascript uh, there are there are these two main functions uh, uh, that are already in the standard library uh, for converting uh, objects uh, to um, json and json to objects so stringify is a method that is uh, can be applied to any type of object json.stringify um, and converts any object into a string and this string uh, contains the json representation of the object itself and this function is recursive so if the object contains uh, nested arrays or nested objects then those are uh, stringified too so there's one string that uh, represents all the properties of the objects sub objects sub arrays and so on uh, when the stringify stop uh, well when it finds uh, uh, primitive values number of strings or it finds something that it cannot serialize uh, like functions so if your object has a property of value of, of type function like a, a method of an object that will not be serialized hmm? because functions are not a, a valid type in json and so they will be skipped and also some properties uh, if they have a non-defined value uh, they will not be serialized hmm? so we won't serialize those properties that have a value and that are and this value is not a function and so it can convert any objects into this textual representation like that and uh, the reverse is uh, Im implemented by the parse method and the parse just takes a string and creates an object uh, 
uh, that uh, um, reflects uh, that same information so uh, in this case it will create an object uh, here that contains uh, four properties and uh, will create the array the, the values in the array so you'll reconstruct a real javascript object uh, object from this string of text uh, that was the json representation yeah. hmm. so json is sort of a of a serial representation for objects uh, there's only one uh, problem is that uh, uh, when we parse a json file uh, of course json will uh, create objects with the right properties but it will not know uh, the prototype of these objects so the json parse will always create uh, the every object with the default uh, object or prototype so the top level prototype like for any uh, literal object like we saw in the, in the class about prototypes so if we want if we want uh, the objects uh, that are uh, created by the json parse to have a prototype uh, uh maybe some of them are date objects some of them are person objects so if you want to attach a prototype to the, to the object that we are uh, reading you can either change the prototype later later or better we have a callback uh, in json parse which is, a, which is called the reviver callback function so a function that revives the objects it doesn't just create an object uh, um, a default type object uh, but it will can create a, an object of any type uh, by setting the right prototype hmm? so we already know what it means to set the prototype to an object if you want uh, uh, more details you just have to go to this uh, um, to this address and it will tell you everything about uh, um, the using the reviver function hmm? so it's a very niche uh, functionality but uh, when you need it it can be useful but let's go back to the to the representation philosophy to the um, rest architecture so right now what we, what we did was to take the real server-side resources and try to abstract them into resources and these resources have an identity and representation the identity is just an address we map abstract resources into specific web addresses it's an arbitrary mapping uh, we, we don't need to really maybe uh, implement those addresses but we, we might and we will um, and these web addresses will represent the resources on the server and the content of the resource uh, will always be represented in json hmm? as much as possible um, and what kind of resources can we represent well basically the conceptual model is very simple we can represent simple resources or collections of resources usually when we have a, a server that handles a given set of functionalities uh, it usually works with set of uh, information all, all the students all the courses uh, all the animals uh, all the cities uh, all the streets in the city and so on mm -hmm. uh, so uh, many times uh, we when, when we have a database table we can think it uh, as a collection of items and uh, uh, we can represent uh, this collection of items with a url that gives a name hmm? so uh, imagine you have a, a database somewhere in the server with a table representing students probably there will be a table a sql table called student uh, you can abstract the concept of students and map it to the uri uh, api dot something slash students this is just a string but it's a string in the form of a web address that represents the collection of all students or the collection of all courses so we have all the data types all the main entities in our application that contain objects that are represented like this with a web address that represents probably the server that we able to provide the api slash the type of resource that we need it's plural because there are many students it's plural because there are many courses and of course inside collection what do we have we have resources items simple resources simple elements simple elements are elements usually of a given type but with a given identity so uh, one two three four five is a student where it's a part of the student's collection is one of the students slash this is specific id hmm? the, the the number the, the student number or we have a course slash the code of the course 
so for uh, identifying a single individual resource we map it to the name of the collection in which it's contained slash the identifier within the collection mm -hmm. so uh, you maybe for example a, a people in the world could be slash people slash the a number or a code or the fiscal code for example in italy that represent that that specific person in a unique way inside the collection so the url for representing a, an item always mentions the collections of which this item belongs hmm? items by themselves are very seldom uh, used and usually they are part of some collection so we, uh, the item is just the collection name slash identifier for the item and that's it basically so we can in this way identify or create uh, uris addresses for any type of resource individual or collections or groups or lists mm -hmm. here we have a very abstract collection type it's not a list it can be a list can be a set can be uh, an, an order list uh, uh we don't care it's just a, a generic uh, container of many objects of the same type and each of them should be identified the uh, can should be identifiable in some way hmm? there there are very simple requirements that are able to map very broadly many kinds of real data and the suggestion is that uh, uh, always try to use uh, nouns for uh, naming the collections uh, names we we use uh, the plural form of the name for naming the collection just to remind us that this is a collection and try to use uh, m as much as possible as concrete as possible the name describing what you are actually storing if you have a collection called items it doesn't mean anything to you it may or it may mean everything anything so there are no semantics in that so this course is much more clear and just for seeing the url you already have an idea of what you are trying to represent and uh, what can we do with these resource names? Well, we can uh, apply operations on these resources or on the other way around uh, a web server that offers some resources will also offer some operations to be applied on those resources. So we could uh, add new elements to a list. You could create a new collection. We could delete an element from a collection. We could uh, de delete all the elements from a collection. Uh, we could update some some property of a given entity inside the collection and so on all the basic properties they could do on collection or collections or on individual items so in our uh, layer stack uh, we are adding another layer which is uh, that of operations we define the resources and they define those operations that have uh, some meaning uh, on the resources so we don't need to define all operations on every resource only those that makes uh, um, uh, that have a, a real meaning or real usefulness in your application and these operations are again can be abstract so uh, add an element uh, delete uh, delete an element uh, delete the first one or whatever um, and we can map these operations into HTTP methods. We already have the, uh, the HTTP uh, protocol already has a, lot, a handful of methods that can be used and we could uh, reinterpret or redefine or give a new meaning or uh, overload a new meaning onto the basic uh, HTTP methods uh, for mapping the primitive operations uh, uh, that we want to do onto the resources into HTTP verbs. So for example the method get get usually is used for for uh, retrieving a representation uh, if i call uh, the get method on a collection the king will be give me retrieving uh, the list of items if you call the get method of an uri that represents a single element then it will give me the properties of that specific element so for example get slash uh, students it will give me the list of all students get slash students slash s123345 it will give me the json description of that specific student with that id hmm? so get can be used to read information about a collection or to read information about a specific element post 
usually used to, used to send new data to the server so we can interpret that if we are posting something into a collection usually we are posting into a collection it means that we are adding a new element into the collection and which is this new element well is the it's encoded in json in the body of the post request uh, put is used for updating an element so we can update one single element by replacing some data some properties of the object that is represented and keeping the objects intact in its collection hmm? delete i don't want to talk about delete because i don't i really hate deleting information but if you need of course uh, it's used for uh, um, deleting an element from a collection hmm? so in a way we are mapping uh, these abstract operations into abstract resources onto http methods on specific uris hmm? so uh, imagine uh, for example you are uh, creating an application that manages uh, some dogs hmm? so you may have a, a collection resource or you may have a, an element resource collection are slash name uh, elements are slash name slash id hmm? and uh, we have the four methods and what happens how we can interpret her uh, it's up to us of course to implement that in, in this way but it's uh, in an easy way of thinking the operation okay so get slash dogs will give me a list of all the dogs in the system get dogs one two three four five will give me information about uh, the dog with this id and of course this list and this info will be json documents this will be probably an array a json array with the ids of the dogs or maybe a small objects with the id and some key property and this uh, second json will be probably an object that will describe all the properties of that dog hmm? so uh, it's up to us to define the proper json format uh, in which these uh, are, are are returned in and they will be returned into the uh, HTTP response body from the get request what happens if we do a, a post post creates new items so basically we can post onto a collection uh, URL and we are uh, sending with the post the description of a new dog so we are sending uh, the JSON format describing all the properties of a new dog and we are posting this new dog into the collection of all, of all dogs and uh, that will add one new element create a new element and add it to the collection uh, since post will add information it's usually import an error to try to send a post to a specific element because the, the element already exists so you cannot post a new element if that element already exists so usually it doesn't make any sense the put uh, uh, method uh, instead is used to update uh, a specific element so if uh, the dog uh, we want to three four five uh, now as a different uh, um, maybe uh, house or maybe different address i want to ad ad update the address where that dog is living then i can put new information on to that will overwrite the current information for that specific dog so the put will probably be a json document that will describe the id of the dog and some properties not all of them and those properties will update and overwrite the existing property for that specific dog and that specific dog will must be already existing so if i want to create a new element i use post if i want to update a, an existing element i will use put uh, theoretically i could send a put onto a resource uh, url but in this case it would mean that we are updating the whole collection so we are replacing all the elements with a new list of elements mm, it's very dangerous uh, as an operation so we usually try to avoid it like avoiding all elements for uh, deleting all elements from uh, collection is also an operation that i like to avoid as much as possible while deleting an, a single uh, item could be a, a, a possibility mm -hmm. and so we can uh, send a delete method uh, with, a, with a small payload containing uh, the id 
uh, of the of the docs to be deleted for example mm -hmm. so we are in some, some way mapping uh, specific http methods onto collection or elements by giving a new meaning to the operation of course nothing is automatic nothing is free we need uh, to implement by ourselves uh, these spe uh, special behaviors but at least this is a clear contract the developer of the server thinks in terms of resources and operation the developer of the client application thinks in terms of resources and operations and so it's easy for the client developer to know which uh, methods to call and it's easier for the server developer to know how to implement these methods what behavior to give to these methods hmm? uh, and so it's a, it's a, an easy way of thinking about the integration without uh, writing uh, hundreds of, of pages of documentation on details and so on hmm? because it's already a framework that applies to most cases hmm? automatically of course there are not just elements and collections in a database there are mostly uh, importantly most importantly relationships mm -hmm. so any element can be in, in a relationship with other other elements and how can we represent them we can extend our syntax by uh, adding a new uh, layer a new level mm -hmm. so for example if i want to know which are the courses to which a given student is enrolled i can identify the student so slash student slash id of the student and slash relationship and add the name of relationship that could be probably the name of another resource and i'm asking what are the resources of type courses that are in relationship with this specific student so we are in a in a very simple way we have not the list of full courses but only the list of courses for this specific student and if we want more details about these courses well we need to uh what is that where was that to get the details uh, directly by the courses table so this syntax will not become deeper we will stop at three level levels collection element relationship on the other hand on the other hand uh, we could say a given course with this code has uh, some students that are enrolled and so this other syntax will identify the list of students enrolled to this course is the dual of that so the same relationship can be navigated in two directions collection element relationship collection element relationship uh, at most we have three levels so we may have the single a uri representing just a collection with one element a specific item with two elements collection slash item or a list of related items with three, with three levels the first two for identifying an element and the third one for identifying which relationship we are interested in and uh, uh, of course uh, representing uh, uh, the uh, the objects uh, and the collections uh, that we exchange uh, we already mentioned that uh, uh, we using we are using uh, uh, both in get and put and post uh, the possible formats uh, uh, in our choice we will always be using uh, uh, json hmm? uh, in in some uh, um, advanced apis uh, probably the user can choose uh, which kind of format so we can indicate that with the uh, fake extensions or with query parameters but let's not make it complex so we're trying to make something quick and, uh, and easy and uh, if you see uh, if, you, if you look around you'll find that uh, this philosophy of uh, rest interfaces is very very uh, common and for example uh, here i listed github twitter uh, uh, google calendar and youtube uh, they all have uh, some kind of a rest interface so deep down if you search into the documentation you see that the style by which you describe the tweets uh, or the style by which you describe the, uh, the projects and the repositories in github uh, or the videos and the playlists in youtube uh, follows this convention more or less no? they may be some sometimes more complex sometimes they're not fully uh, following these uh, guidelines uh, but you can recognize quite easily uh, this uh, way of thinking so collections and collection slash identifiers uh, collection slash identifiers slash relationships uh, um, are are, uh, are common to, 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 to many of, of these uh, of these uh, real world uh, applications 
so uh, that's why it's a common knowledge uh, say of organizing apis uh, using this criteria with this way of thinking it's easy also to, to read you don't have to learn a new style a new programming style every time you go to a different website because more or less they are all using the same conventions um, of course uh, there are there's something more complex sometimes for example if you want to get a list uh, you don't want uh, always to have the full list because this full list may have maybe tens of thousands of elements and so maybe you want to add uh, some filters uh, or to restrict uh, the result to a given uh, subset or to limit the number of results and so on so the actual apis uh, are uh, more complex because they give you more control over what kind of information you can get and of course uh, uh, every time you may also get errors uh, and errors can be communicated through the mechanisms of http status code so when everything is okay you just return 200 when something is wrong you can return a 4 400 code if the the data is not correct or a 500 code if the server cannot handle the, the uh, request and so on so you should return a meaningful http status code plus in the response body you can return an error object so the response body you already have the idea of putting some json in the response body so if the request is okay you just put uh, the json for corresponding to the request if there is an error just don't leave the response empty put some error description some error description in json that the client side will be able to analyze to parse to understand what happened maybe to show this information show the error messages to the user hmm? uh, and so uh, try to do the extra step not just of returning some value when everything is okay but also returning some value uh, in, in json when something's wrong even if uh, the status code is 400 or 500 you may have a body in the response okay it's not forbidden so it's an error code so it's very easy to 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 detect from the client side but then you know that if the error code is not 200 then you will have an error message in the body uh, of the response uh, and you can parse it you can analyze it another big problem that we are not going to touch uh, right now maybe we can do this later in the course uh, is that of authentication um, unless you have a public api uh, you may you should uh, uh, restrict uh, the clients that can access your apis so not everybody can make all queries only if you are authorized only if you have a login and so on and uh, of course the mechanism of login password doesn't work here because the client is not a real user the client will be a web a browser or the javascript in some browser somewhere hmm? and so you are authorizing a given application with uh, some specific cryptographic code with some specific uh, uh, api code or api key so you see that a lot of real world uh, servers uh, before you can do some uh, um, api calls uh, you must register your your developer user and obtain a key and then you can embed this key into your application and in some cases you have to pay for every call okay some some call, some apis are free to call and some are uh, expensive you can you uh, you can you need you need to to have some some money on your credit card in order to be able to call some apis um, and uh, the bad uh, the bad thing is that uh, different services use different styles of, of authentication uh, with uh, some are custom methods uh, some with custom uh, these are all uh, HTTP headers that you must set in the request in order for your API call to be accepted um, and uh, different services uh, use different authentication styles so it's really a nightmare let's not make it easy um, uh, you have to obtain a key and uh, understand how to send the key to the server in each and every request using uh, uh, different uh, uh, probably different uh, methods for different servers uh, fortunately uh, all the world is more or less standardizing onto the uh, all out uh, strategy uh, technology 
so more or less at least we have a standard way where everybody most everybody mostly everybody is converging even if uh, OAuth is not easy to use at all uh, so uh, because it has uh, tokens for the application for the user and so on uh, so it's a it's a real big word uh, uh, for the moment we are setting that aside we just remember that uh, in a real world uh, api should be authenticated because only authorized users uh, should be able to call any specific api uh, if you want to design uh, some apis for your applications uh, you can apply these uh, say basic concepts or maybe you can also uh, look at some uh, structured document where some companies try to offer some more specific and more detailed design guidelines and so for example there is this this page here that tries to collect a lot of documents that different companies uh, have published uh, if you if you don't want to to search and choose uh, uh, a good choice could be the google api design guide so a document an internal document by google that tells their own developers uh, how to develop apis and they publish this guide uh, and it's general and uh, it, it uh, helps you in designing your apis for your application so first define which are the resources uh, define which are the relationships uh, and try to map those into naming uh, and uh, and then define the methods uh, uh, to be called uh, for every for every operation that uh, is applicable to every resource so it's nothing uh, uh, nothing is not different from what we discussed now but it's more detailed uh, and so it gives this document gives you a lot of examples for example you see that uh, the example of gmail have a collection called users uh, and uh, then you have a single user which has the user slash the id and uh, this user slash id has uh, messages that are all the messages for that user you can select a single message by specific specifying the id of that message you already see that is a, a deviation from the standard idea because here we have four levels user user id message message id uh, before i told you that the four levels are not needed because you just need to have users id messages and then if you want the id of the messages you make a separate query messages slash id in this case they decided to extend it uh, uh for, for their de design reasons uh, basically because they always want to have a, a user context in which uh, to an interpret the list of messages mm? uh, but uh, it's you know there are small variations in different services that are easy to understand once uh, you understand the general uh, the general scheme uh, so this uh, again from from the google uh, um, uh, document uh, uh, again a, a summary table that will tell us what how to implement uh, the abstract methods so if you want to list uh, a set of resources you make a get on a url corresponding to a collection no, the, the uh, request body is empty the response body is the list of the resource uh, if you want to get information about one resource you go to get to a resource url no request body and the resource uh, will be represented in the response you want to create you use post you want to update you use put and you put the resource body here and so on and uh, more details about this table so, so it's uh, the same information you know, uh, than the table that we showed before uh, except that uh, uh, it's, uh, it's in the other way around so it starts from the abstract operation and tell you how concretely you can achieve that in the slides, I won't comment them. In the slides, there are a couple of more uh, tables with uh, with guidelines, with specific suggestions. Uh, uh, if you want to go deeper and to to read, to if you have any doubt uh, how to implement them, but uh, basically they are uh, the, the, the 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 more details about uh, this basic idea. Mm -hmm. So this is how we think about uh, uh, offering APIs. The next step, of course, will be how we implement them how we can implement uh, into a web server a given set of apis uh, first uh, and second uh, how we can call them from the client side okay. let's start uh, from the first step so uh, start from uh, uh, implementing the uh, apis and to see how we can uh, implement uh, the these apis in express uh, 
we can just pick up the express lights again and go uh, farther a bit uh, after the uh, the part that we already discussed uh, uh, and we have a couple of slides and implementing rest apis in express you know, that just really two slides in number um, because it's very easy at this point we are just uh, using what we already know so the http methods uh, and we are trying to implement them uh, with a with a proper meaning so for example uh, rest api in express are just regular http requests so we just have uh, to define normal routes and these routes should map uh, to the uh, request uh, um, sorry, sorry to the resource identifiers so if we have slash dogs uh, one two three four we can map them into a route uh, into an extra route uh, dog slash uh, uh, colon dog id mm -hmm. and so inside the method we can uh, retrieve the information about this specific dog a request and response body contain the resource representation in json so we must be able to uh, in a get uh, methods we can, should be able to return the json corresponding to a, a collection or the json corresponding to an object and this is easy to do because we just have to stringify our array or to stringify our object and return that in with the result of the send uh, better uh, we can uh, response with the send better if we re um, return with the method resource.json it will automatically stringify and set the content type properly and so we will also always use a resource re response.json to return um, the json object maybe they are collection maybe they are a single entities uh, uh, to our caller mm. so json remember that's two things uh, one is to stringify the object into into a json uh, text uh, and second to set the content type uh, uh, to applications less json that is a must for us uh, to, to to set so if we if you try to send it by hand uh, you must remember to go to, to to set the headers too uh, on the other hand if you are receiving a, a json payload from a, a http request uh, for example a post request or a put request that has a body with the uh, with a json representing the object that we need to add you must pass the body into a json object and this can be done very easily with the uh, expert.json middleware uh, so you, mu you must install the middleware application.use of express.json and once uh, that middleware is installed uh, you can easily uh, it will automatically recognize the json in the body and uh, uh, extract the object and uh, um, body will be a reference to the object obtained by decomposing by analyzing by parsing the json file and of course uh, we are getting some uh, information from the outside uh, and so we are populating one object into our program with some information that is coming from an http request and we don't know who made this http request whether it's our code whether it's something else whether it's valid it's not uh, something malicious so uh, we should always remember three steps uh, validate the inputs validate the inputs and then really validate the inputs so uh, it's maybe it may seem boring but if you, we in this case we should never trust uh, the body contents without checking hmm? because maybe everything is nice and the value comes from our own javascript code that has already been properly validated or not but in most cases the request will come from some somebody else and we need to protect our server in order to avoid deleting uh, our elements or uh, adding an element which is fake which is not validated and so on mm -hmm. so it's very boring but uh, unfortunately part of the work here it, there will be probably most work in validating the inputs rather than validate uh, really executing the method and so i just to summarize i, I try to, to write a very simple table of suggestions uh, uh, for example if we want to implement some uh, endpoints uh, uh, for the get uh, we can get uh, a collection or we can get a specific item in uh, in the in the rest uh, syntax and uh, in the case of a collection we can have a method in this case i i'm, I'm I imagine create using a database we'll see a full example with this code inside so right now it's just a, a quick reference but then we will construct a running code from which uh, these examples were taken 
so I have a class, uh, I call it DAO, like a data access object, so a class for accessing the data in the database. Um, I am a method for obtaining a, a JavaScript array, a JavaScript list of courses, and then I convert these courses to JSON and send them as a request. You notice the then here, because uh, everything, of course, is asynchronous, so everything is, is uh, based on provinces, uh, like uh, uh, all, the, all the code in JavaScript. If you are uh, doing the same for specific uh, elements, you want information about a single course, then, of course, you can uh, use the parametric uh, path, which is a feature of Express that we briefly saw before. And in this case, whatever is written after the, the slash will be stashed into the dot .code property of the params property of the request. Request.params.code and this code is equal to that code. Um, of course, uh, this code can be anything, okay? Every, everybody can write some code there or some text or something that contains embellished characters or whatever. So you should not trust them blindly. You should ensure that you are validating that your, your program will not crash or will not do wrong things uh, if the code is uh, has an, ex an unexpected value. And uh, again, uh, in this case, you, you, you do the query onto the database and then uh, you return uh, you, uh, a response uh, by taking the object describing the single course uh, and then convert it to JSON and returning it. Mm -hmm. So for the get request, the code more or less look, always looks like this. Uh, take the parameter, check whether it's valid, uh, do the data do the, the real data access uh, wherever you store the data and then construct the json to return and in a post or a put uh, you do something similar uh, for example in a post uh, so you see you, you here we have the app.get method and uh, here you have app.post method remember to install the expert.json middleware in order to be able to parse the body and have the body property uh, properly uh, filled in and uh, um, app.post exams you are posting to a collection you get the body of the request that the, the body of the request okay the, in this case, the request will contain the description of the full exam to be added you validate in this case it will be a complex a complete object with complex fields so the validation will be probably uh, particularly heavy you need to check a lot of, uh, of consistency information and then if everything is okay you can create exam so you can ask the data layer to uh, to return um, sorry to, to add the, the, the new data and at this point you can close the, the request you can end it uh, for example you or you can send back uh, the representation of the results uh, after being validated after being maybe normalized so the post response may have a body or may be empty depends on you whether you want to return some useful information after you added the element hmm? so again for every post or put by the way the structure is more or less the same hmm? uh, offer the post remember to to install the middleware and just uh, request.body is the object Re, uh, obtained by the json.parse method so inside it will call re, uh, request.body equal json.parse and will parse uh, the actual body of the request so you may have an, a direct a, a object that is obtained by reconstructing uh, the object from the uh, from the data uh, we may see some example we had the problem of the last class here and we can you, we could try to fake uh, some sort of a, of, a, of api for example the one about the docs and uh, we try maybe to to implement two methods uh, fake ones uh, but at least uh, we see how it works for example for getting dogs uh, and another for getting a single dog like we had in the slides docs slash colon dog id and then we may have uh, maybe a, a, a app app dot post a new dog hmm? we try to implement these three 
REST APIs for a list of dogs. Uh, we can uh, maybe fake it uh, with one uh, uh, dog list that will start uh, with one, with, with maybe two dogs, uh, and we imagine uh, a structure like uh, uh, a dog as uh, an ID, which is a number and uh, name. Let's do it like this. Name is a uh, is uh, um, wharf, and then we have a second dog with the ID of five. They not they don't need to be consecutive, of course, and the name will be uh, Daisy. Okay, so imagine this sh should be a real database. We'll see in a moment how to do that. But for the moment, let's just imagine we have a very quick list. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's try to implement these methods. Let's increase the, the zoom here. And so the dogs, uh, we have a request, a response, a callback. Get the list of dogs. So the, the easy the easy operation that we can do is just to return, in this case, uh, uh, the JSON for the docs list. In this case, it's returning all the information, okay? Uh, or maybe it's better just to return just the IDs. Hmm? So we can map uh, every dog into an object uh, so uh, return a value compose an object with just the id id is dog dot id hmm? so uh, a map we just trying to extract some attributes maybe the dog has 27 different attributes we have a lot of dogs so we want uh, only to return a list of objects with just the id property hmm? let's try to see it Okay, and once we have defined this uh, method here, we can try to test the application. So let's start it. And we can try to open the browser and retrieve uh, the list of dogs. So we open localhost 3000 less dogs. And we see that uh, the browser uh, detected uh, the, the structure in raw data it this is the actual uh, value that has been returned uh, to objects with these IDs uh, and the browser just for convenience uh, will show us the JSON uh, structure uh, maybe it's too much we, if we only want to return the IDs uh, maybe we just uh, we can skip the creation of the object we can just return the list of dog IDs uh, without creating the object so if we add, update the mapping you see Nodmon, which is doing their work uh, of restarting the application. If I reload, I just get uh, an array, hmm? an array with the IDs. So this is the representation of the list of docs. If I want to, uh, I don't need to do any validation here, okay? Because uh, uh, the, the request is only one, there's no parameters, there's no user, uh, user input data. If we want to specify uh, the get of a dog resource, so we don't need to return the, the filter of this information. We will filter this list and only extract the information that you want. So again, request response, arrow function to, uh, so I can first of all uh, check whether a dog with a given ID is uh, available. Hmm? So, for example, I can const this do the dog uh, by uh, by searching uh, into the dogs list uh, if uh, we have uh, a dog with the same uh, ID. Uh, where do I get the ID from? From uh, dog ID here, and the dog ID is uh, available like uh, const dog ID is. Uh, from the request 
object the params parameters dot dog id so it can extract the dog id from the parameter this value can be used uh, by selecting from this array the specific uh, dog with the value uh, with the correct uh, id value so for example maybe uh, dogs list the filter uh, and uh, the filter would be that uh, uh, dog dot id is equal uh, is equal to a dog id hmm? so if uh, uh, we must first check if the dog uh, dot uh, length size length is uh, one there should be only one i can return it so return a, re a response dot json of the dog first element remember the filters returns uh, an array hmm? and uh, uh, otherwise uh, it's an error so uh, i may have uh, a, the status code uh, of uh, 400 for example in general and uh, and the request or if i would i could send some json maybe json describing a uh, uh, reason doctor found hmm? so let's see how this works if it works otherwise we'll debug it dogs slash three dog list is not defined because it's dogs list okay let's start again the dog again the dog these are easy errors okay i'm happy that uh, uh, get slash dogs slash three gave me the representation corresponding to dog number three if i try another number four which doesn't exist uh, it's not status code uh, but it's uh, okay i forgot the name of the function but we have the slides ready to 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 check it status just status so again let's try it again okay in this case it will give me a reason dog not found and the raw data uh, this is for for testing um, uh, get uh, methods just a browser is uh, is uh, is sufficient otherwise uh, uh, i i have a sometimes i use a, a very simple extension which is called the rest client which is an extension of the browser they will uh, allow me to issue get or set requests uh, or post and so on so for example if i uh, use this get on this docs it will send it and will give you me information about the headers of the response the body of the response and so on the preview and if you want you may also try this uh, let me increase the font uh, try this command with this cool serial uh, command uh, in order to test them to the command line and uh, if you want uh, you can uh, add some information for example the tree is green because it's successful the status code is 200 and the response is the information for worth here and if i try with four i can send a request and it says that the uh, status code is 400 and so we you know that you can you receive the correct uh, uh, information so this can be useful just to uh, see all the details of your implementation and um, finally we want to implement the, the post information about the dogs request response remember that we want to to parse the body 
with json so let's go to the top and check whether we installed the, the json parser yet no we didn't so we installed it before everything else app.use express dot json hmm? express with an x okay here so remember to do that and uh, at this point we can uh, check about uh, uh, const uh, the dog the dog from the request dot body hmm? and uh, we can check if uh, the dog dot i name in this case the the, the id is defined and not null and the dog dot uh, uh, name they are if they are defined then i can create a new dog otherwise uh, uh, i can send an error message uh, uh, saying uh, insufficient information Or whatever i not uh, and i can add to the uh, docs list uh, i can uh, um, add the new the new uh, the new element hmm? push a new element with the description of the dog so id is equal to the dog dot id and the name is equal to the dog dot name i'm not uh, pushing the dog because the dog may might have additional properties that can be set by the client and i don't i don't want to use those properties so i need to be careful in this case, I'm doing very, very basic validation, I'm not checking whether ID is a, is a correct number, whether it's already existing. So there's a lot of other tests to be done here, but just for the sake of brevity. Uh, invalid short end property, okay, because it's a column here. Okay, and so in this case, I can have the, um, the information for dog number three and can use it to create a new dog. So. I can get the dog number three. Oops, something's wrong. Okay. What's wrong with this request? Is it running? Try then. wrong with this uh, uh, okay I can I get post uh, get three so nothing change here anyway uh, let me I will debug it uh, and uh, I will uh, um, get post oh, I, I don't see something but but I will debug it and tell you uh, and uh, I'll share the files with the with the correct implementation sorry for the inconvenience what i wanted to show you is that at this point uh, i could post uh, to the docs url the the body with a new id uh, but this should be a json formatted so remember the quotes uh, and uh, could be and seven and the name name could be uh, Snoopy. And in this case, uh, once we finish the bugging, it should be working, and uh, I should be um, adding this uh, this uh, this dog to the list. Hmm? So I, I want the bug it in real time, just not to waste too much time on the video. But uh, uh, I will share the correct version. Okay. So with the uh, I, I want to show this with this uh, REST client extension because. Uh, 
um, it's, it can be useful also to try post uh, requests uh, that something that you cannot do directly for the command line for the browser url because that here you can only issue get okay with uh, with some extension or some other tool that you, there are hundreds of, of tools like that uh, around uh, you can also uh, test them uh, as you want and and be sure that to debug them uh, and before uh, calling them from your real uh, application okay i think uh, this uh, all the information that we need uh, for for understanding the rest apis uh, and uh, for implementing them in our browser uh, one last topic I just want to, to tell you is uh, uh, actually uh, right now in the example I just store some data into a list in the server. Of course, there's not the right way to go. And the right way to go is to store data really in a, to a database. Hmm? And so uh, we are not explaining databases here. I'm just giving you uh, uh, some quick pointers. Uh, well, the web server should uh, include uh, some mechanism for storing data in a persistent way in a shared and persistent way so that the same data can be accessed by many uh, clients in different times uh, and should resist uh, when, if you restart the browser or if you restart the server the node.js environment uh, uh, can, has uh, modules for accessing every kind of database you can imagine uh, for keeping it very simple and very short we will use uh, sqlite uh, uh, which is the uh, you probably know it a very uh, in process implementation of a database so you don't need to install another uh, server but you just have uh, one file uh, that contains all the information i i've shown you some 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 information about how to install and to create and to use uh, sqlite and then we'll see more details when we do in the next uh, uh, lectures uh, uh, a full exercise also using that so sqlite is just uh, uh, one module that you can install and uh, you can uh, at, the, at that point uh, access some databases stored in a file so you imagine your web server will open a file and store all the data into that specific file you don't need to connect to us uh, to an external web server of course you should if your application is uh, is uh, is larger and uh, but for simple things uh, probably uh, it's enough uh, um, to, to do this in the simple way so you are creating a new uh, db connection by opening a file with the sqlite.database function so you are creating a new uh, database of course there's some a bit of error checking and then how to execute uh, or access the data sqlite implements um, a simplified syntax of the sql so if you have a select statement in sql you can um, execute uh, uh, a, a method uh, on the db object uh, that you created before here and uh, you have different options for a select query a select query you can uh, you maybe you want to have all the values at once and so you have a callback that re receives a rows uh, which is an array with all the values and every element of rows is, a, is an object that represents all the values uh, in that row now, if you are familiar with the jdbc or with php with any other access method is very uh, it's very similar the only difference of course in javascript that data arrive through a callback and not through a synchronous function db all returns an array with all the rows uh, db.get returns only the first row which is useful if uh, you are doing some query that should return only one row or dbit ot uh, each uh, will uh, return uh, all the rows but will call back the function once per every row so we'll do the for each inside okay so it will get many calls of this function one per every row and this is good if you have a, a lot of data and uh, you don't want to transfer all of them into the into the an array so in this case you have to have the first the full array and then call the callback in this case uh, you are consuming the response one row, row by row hmm? and uh, mm, this is for 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 queries and uh, the the interesting part is that you see that uh, uh, there's a second parameter the first parameter is the query the, the last parameter is the function callback and the intermediate parameter is an array of parameters is is optional but it could contain the parameters to replace uh, 
uh, some uh, some placeholders into the query hmm? so it's very uh, useful and it's essential because you must never for security reason use string concatenation or template strings for constructing sql statements because it's very dangerous to interpolate some string that comes from the user into a sql uh, command that uh, will uh, uh, go directly to the server no? you are risking a lot of sql injection from the from the, from the wild the users always try to secure your queries by writing the query if you have some parameter that come from the user use a placeholder here and use the parameter here to insert inject the value into to the placeholder in this case you won't have any risk of uh, dangers uh, coming from sql injection of people that are trying to uh, insert in, into the code some sql syntax in order to execute a query which is different from the one you want hmm? but uh, we are we, we won't enter into the sql injection uh, stuff like uh, like that uh, right now uh, so if the query is a uh, it's fixed uh, just use a string if the query is parametric contains some variables uh, use the parametric uh, function the parametric syntax use a question mark when the parameter should be and use the value the actual value of the parameter inside these uh, square brackets and finally if you have to execute some queries which are not returning values uh, for example you are creating table uh, inserting uh, updating elements and so on uh, the results uh, are not uh, uh, don't contain uh, uh, of course uh, rows of results no? the select returns data all the other statements don't return data so you see the callback is simpler because it doesn't have the uh, row or rows parameters and uh, and so in this case uh, you have uh, uh, you can you you use the db.run method that doesn't uh, uh, return a value but only uh, execute a statement hmm? and gives you some information inside the callback you have, you have information about uh, uh, the number of rows that have been changed uh, and maybe the last id of the object that was added in order to remember which is and to refer to the object just insert but these are just details it's just a, a very simple api for uh, accessing a, a database uh, that we will use uh, we'll need to use in our web application and uh, the, the SQLite is really easy to use. The, 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 the API, the, the interface is basically uh, these four or five methods, uh, nothing more. And we can use them to, to store at this point our data inside the database and not just inside strings. Hmm? Uh, remember, uh, databases uh, should be on the server side. Uh, you could potentially use SQLite on inside the browser, but it's better not, it's better not to have heavy computing there. Uh, if you have some local storage, you can do that on, on the on the browser, but the database belongs to the server side, really. And to uh, give access to the database, we will use a REST API for giving access in read and write to individual uh, values and resources that are stored inside the database. So we'll try to put everything together into an exercise in order to understand all the layers right now. Um, so just remember, we started from, uh, from the REST, uh, uh, it's a way of creating APIs uh, by thinking on designing them. Then we saw how we implemented them uh, in using normal app.get and app.post methods in, uh, in Node. Uh, you must remember the bug in the, the last problem. And then we saw that these methods may map uh, into database functions at the low level in order to really access the data. Uh, la later on, we'll, uh, we'll try to put everything together into an exercise. <laughs>